The story begins with a sad, lonely high school student named Ishida, who quits his part-time job. He sells all of his belongings, including his mattress and clothes. He goes to the bank and asks to empty his account. After counting all the money he received, he puts it next to his mother. Afterwards, he walks towards a bridge. He stands at the top and thinks of jumping from there. But then he stops. He couldn't take his life. He then walks back home. Then we see a flashback where we see young Ishida walking carefree along with his two friends, Heroes and Shimada. They used to hang out a lot and have fun. He is very cheerful and fun-loving in his young days, unlike at present. One day in class when Ishida is lazing, his teacher enters and tells the class that a new student is joining them today. Ishida's friend, now, says that the newbie is a girl. Ishida responds, you think I care. Just then, the new student arrives. Everyone watches her silently. The girl seems to be very quiet. Ishida stares at her. The teacher then tells her to introduce herself. Ishida starts playing with his pencil, but all the classmates get curious to know about the new girl. Ishida looks towards her as she is just standing and hasn't started yet. Teacher pats her, and she then opens her bag. She takes out a notebook for conversations. She opens the first page which has her name, Shoko Nishimiya. Ishida is amazed to see this. As she turns the page, it is written, Please use this to talk with me, and then finally, I'm deaf. This amazes Ishida even more, as well as all the other students in the class. Ishida suddenly cries out, Holy crap. Later, all the girls in class try to talk with her through the notebook. Now Chan teases her, Nishimiya, do you speak Japanese? And Kawai tells her, watch your mouth. Later, through the notebook, Nishimiya tells them to come again. Kawai asks her, do you have any nickname? It's Sho. And now says to Ishida, her nickname is Sho, just like you. Ishida, who's bullying his friend, says, it's not nice, and pulls his pant. Later, when the teacher starts teaching, Nishimiya looks here and there as she can't able to listen. Now taps her with a pen and asks for her notebook to help her. She then starts writing notes for her while Ishida watches her. At music class, they all are ready to sing. But Nishimiya starts singing before anyone. Everyone looks at her. Kawai taps her shoulder to tell her, you went too early. Now says, forget about winning competition, we're screwed. Later in class, the teacher scolds now for bad pronunciation. But when Nishimiya's turn comes to read, she reads in a very undeveloped tone like a child. The teacher doesn't scold her, which makes Nayaka a bit pissed off. Now Ishida starts reading like Nishimiya and ends up getting scolded. At cleaning time, Nishimiya watches the girls and goes to talk with them, but they don't seem to be interested. As days pass by, girls who want to be friends with Nishimiya start ignoring her. Now lies to Nishimiya that they are going home when, in reality, they are going to some other place to have fun. Nishimiya is standing alone when Ishida appears and throws a stone at her. He says, you need to be smarter or people will start hating you. She comes closer to Ishida and asks him, will you become my friend? She sounds weird. Ishida couldn't understand her sign language and undeveloped words. He throws sand on her, saying, you are gross and walks away from there. Next day, a teacher specialized in sign language joins and tells everyone about it. That if they learn it, they will be able to communicate with Nishimiya. Ishida thinks of what Nishimiya was trying to tell him in the playground, while now objects. Isn't it enough we write in her notebook? The teacher says with sign language, it will be easier to talk with Nishimiya. Just then, Sahara says, I'll learn sign language. She becomes friends with Nishimiya and tries to converse in sign language with her. But now doesn't like this, so she starts making fun of Sahara's clothes and chubbiness. Sahara can't endure this and leaves the school. Ishida realizes that she left and thinks that it's because of Nishimiya. Later, he writes bad things about Nishimiya on the board. Now says, Ishida, you are going too far, man. Shimada calls him a bad boy, and he says, who cares, I think it's just right. Just then, Nishimiya enters and walks to see it. Ishida says, yikes, who did this? And starts wiping it, saying, how mean, don't worry I will wipe this. And then he says, all gone. Nishimiya takes the chalk and starts writing something. It's thank you. Ishida doesn't like this and walks away. In class, Ishida cries out loudly in her ears, which shocks her. She looks back, and the teacher scolds Ishida to behave as they're in the middle of the class. Nishimiya holds her ears because it's painful for her. Now looks at her and thinks of something. She approaches Nishimiya and checks her ears. She has hearing aids. Now says, show me. As she takes them out, Ishida calls her, what is that, let me see. She throws them towards him, and he throws them away, saying, it's gross. And with this, Ishida's bullying starts. He keeps throwing away her hearing aids, shouts loudly in her ears, draws bad things on her notebook, wets her with water, and tries every mean to bully her. 
One day, when he takes away her hearing aids, blood comes out of her ears. Kawai says, what did you do to her? But he doesn't regret it as they walk towards home after school. Nishimiya appears and he says, you are in the way, move. She writes something. She shows him, I'm sorry. He takes it and asks, what's your problem? She tries to hold his hand, but he couldn't understand and says, you are creeping me out. She again tries to tell him in sign language, you and me, let's be friends. He can't understand and throws away her notebook in the water and then walks away. Nishimiya jumps in the water to find her notebook, and Shimada makes fun of her. The next day, Nishimiya is absent. Principal informs that her mom called. In the past five months, her eight hearing aids have been lost. Her mom believes she's being bullied in school. Hearing aids are very expensive. He asks who was bullying her. This reminds Ishida of his mother, who cuts hair to earn money. She can't afford to pay back for that, so he shivers raising his hand to accept it. Just then, his teacher angrily thumps the board and asks him to stand up. As he knows Ishida was the bully, he asks now about this. She says he might have messed with her from time to time. This shocks Ishida. Shimada also puts all the blame on him, saying, I told him to stop, but he didn't. He cries out, it's not just me. But Shimada also bullied her, while well, now and Kawai badmouthed her. Kawai tears up and lies, I would never do that. Everyone starts looking at Ishida as the bully. After school, Shimada throws him in the water for taking his name in class. He found Nishimiya's notebook there, which he had thrown earlier. He reads every bad thing he wrote in her notebook as he walks back home. As he walks towards his room, his mom tells him, your teacher told me everything. She says, we are going to see Nishimiya. He looks toward her and sees her teary eyes, ashamed of what her son did. She then takes out her hard-earned money from the bank and gives it to Nishimiya's mom, apologizing on behalf of her son. Ishida looks with regretful eyes. As they were conversing, Ishida walks down the stairs. He saw Nishimiya, who is feeding the birds, and hides. He silently tries to pass from there but stumbles. The birds fly away from the noise, and Nishimiya spots him. Later, his mother comes and says, be a good boy from tomorrow. From the next day, Ishida, who was a bully, now gets bullied in the same way. He used to bully Nishimiya. One day, after getting bullied, he comes back to class. He sees Nishimiya, who is rubbing the bad things written on his table. He approaches her and asks, what are you doing? Not knowing anything. He says, get away, you creep. She innocently looks at him. He angrily says, if you want something, say it. I don't understand that stupid look. She bites him, but he still can't understand anything, and they both start fighting. She tries to say, I'm dying inside, but he can't understand her undeveloped voice. After this, Nishimiya is transferred to another school, so now Ishida has to rub his table by himself. Ishida doesn't feel good in class now, and Nishimiya's seat is always empty after she's gone. Now the scene shifts back to teenage Ishida in the present, who walks toward his sign language class. Just as he was entering, he hears someone calling Nishimiya's name and turns back. As he sees her, he runs after her. She turns around and looks at him. He tells her, remember me, I'm Ishida. She smiles and then runs from there. Ishida follows her down the stairs. She hides, he calls her name, but he finds her. She stands up, and then Ishida gives back her notebook. He uses sign language, and Nishimiya asks, how do you know sign language? He replies, I learned it. Nishimiya gets emotional seeing the notebook. He asks, me and you, could we be friends? And then he slaps himself, saying, what am I saying? He finally understands that Nishimiya was asking the same thing back in grade school. He looks at her, her eyes fill up with tears. The next morning, Ishida wakes up to the voice of his niece calling him for breakfast. He comes out, and then before eating, he thanks for the food and starts eating. His mother takes out the money he left for her before attempting suicide. She says, I'm happy that you earn money by doing part-time. Then she suddenly gets angry and asks, why did you want to kill yourself? You didn't even think about your mother. She then says, I'll burn this 1.7 million yen, your hard-earned money, if you don't promise me not to kill yourself, you stupid son. He stops her, saying, I'm sorry, I won't do it. He even sits down and apologizes, and his mother smiles with teary eyes. Just then, the money catches fire. They try to put out the fire, but it's already too late. On the way to school, he thinks of how he tried to kill himself yesterday, and then his meeting with Nishimiya. They fed some bread to the fishes. He then recalls a middle school memory of how his own friend, Shimada, tells everyone to stay away from Ishida because he's a bully. He realizes that your sins always come back to bite you. After that, everyone turns away their faces from him, and now he lives a lonely life. He enters his high school. He looks around, and everyone's face bears big crosses, as if they are rejecting him. He covers his ears, silencing the sound of their conversation. Later, after class, it's break time. 
Kawai approaches and tells him to submit his math notebook. He says, sorry, I'll do it later, without looking at her. Other students in class talk about him, questioning if he feels lonely being alone all the time. Just then Ishida remembers offering a DVD to Shimada in middle school, only to be rejected with the words, maybe I should stop being a fan. In the present, Ishida feels distressed remembering this. Later, while eating out, he spots a boy eating by himself. He then recalls his meeting with Nishimiya and feels like meeting her once again. After school, he rides back home. The next morning, on the way to school, Ishida thinks of meeting Nishimiya after school. He parks his bike and as he starts walking towards the school, he witnesses the same boy from yesterday being bullied by a guy who wants his bike. The boy cries out, someone, please help. Ishida approaches them and tells the guy, you can take mine. After school, while walking home without his bike, he ponders, I wanted to see Nishimiya today, but maybe this is a sign I shouldn't. Just then, a coupon flies by, catching Ishida's attention. He grabs it, discovering it's for discounted fluffy bread. Now, he has a reason to meet Nishimiya. When he reaches to meet her, a young boy tells him she's not here. But Ishida can clearly see Nishimiya sitting inside the class. He says, she's right there. The boy insists she's not and asks him, are you really friends with her? As he gets no answer, he closes the door on Ishida's face, and then goes to Nishimiya, who asks who was at the door. The boy replies there was a creepy rat out there and assures her that it's never coming back. He then walks back home and spots that boy again. The boy calls him out, saying, Look, I bought your bike back. Ishida is amazed by this, wondering why someone would go to this extent for him. Cross disappears from the boy's face, which for Ishida means he accepts him. Ishida asks his name, and he tells him, I'm Nagatsuka. I sit behind you in class. The next morning when Ishida rides towards school, Nagatsuka catches him and rides along with him. After school, they both hang out and watch a movie at the theater. Ishida seems happy for the first time as he made his first friend in high school. Later, they both eat together. Ishida asks him, what is the meaning of friend? As he still thinks about the question asked by the young guy, are you Nishimiya's friend? Nagatsuka says, hold out your hand, and Ishida does. They do some friendly movements. He says, that is what friends are. Friendship defies logic or words. Ishida is amazed by this answer. He again goes to meet Nishimiya, but the young guy again tells him she's not here. Ishida asks, by the way, who are you? The boy replies, I'm her boyfriend, and bread falls from Ishida's hand as if he's shocked. He says, Nishimiya likes younger boys, that's unexpected. Here, take a bread at least. But the boy coldly tells him, are you done here? Goodbye. Suddenly, Nagatsuka appears and holds him by the collar, saying, let my friend meet Nishimiya. Everyone gathers to see what's going on. Nishimiya also stands up to see. She spots Ishida and Ishida looks at her, thinking what she might be thinking, and runs away from there. Nishimiya follows him. Now Ishida is talking with Nishimiya in sign language. The young boy takes the camera and zooms in to know what they are talking about. Ishida says, I was searching for a reason to meet you. Nishimiya replies, I'm so glad, I was thinking the same thing. Ishida then takes out the bread, saying, let's feed the fishes. As they feed the fishes, he asks, is feeding them fun? She says, yes. She then takes out the middle school notebook and starts looking inside to see what Ishida had written. He tries to stop her. The notebook slips from her hand and falls into the water. Nishimiya climbs onto the railing and jumps into the water for the notebook. Nishida also jumps after her. As he goes up he retrieves the notebook. He looks at Nishimiya and cries out her name who is still searching it. Later, they come out of the water. He says sorry to her as the notebook dropped because of him. She thanks him by bowing and then leaves. The young boy has captured everything on his camera. At night, he uploads a photo of Ishida on the internet with an unknown identity, depicting that Ishida tried committing suicide. The next day, when Ishida is lost in thoughts of meeting with Nishimiya, everyone talks about him. As he sits in his seat, a classmate asks, Is this you, right? Before Ishida can understand anything, his teacher comes and calls him. Now he is at home because he tried committing suicide as the picture seems to imply. His mother tells him to go pick up his niece from school. Before going home, he takes Maria to the playground. Maria calls him and tells him someone is inside. He looks inside, and it's Nishimiya's boyfriend. When he opens his eyes, he says, Oh, it's the rat. Ishida asks, What are you doing here? Instead of replying, the young boy says, Aren't you mad at me? I was the one who tweeted your picture. Yell at me, dude. Ishida says, No, nah, I can't. I had it coming. After all, you are Nishimiya's boyfriend. Just then, Maria says, I'm hungry, let's go home. Ishida tells the boy, you also go home. 
But as he's leaving, the boy faints. So Ishida brings him home, and they all are about to eat. Maria says, say ah, and he moves forward to take the bite. At night, when Ishida is sleeping, the boy couldn't sleep as he recalls Nishimiya being very angry with him for uploading Ishida's picture on the internet. He walks towards home by himself, drenched in rain. He spots a frog on the way and takes a picture. Just then, Ishida appears with an umbrella, saying, You suddenly vanished, that scared me. Now as they walk, Ishida asks, Why'd you run away from home? The boy replies, I had a fight with Nishimiya. She told me to go away. Ishida asks, Do you guys live together? Instead of replying, the boy pushes the umbrella towards him. Ishida moves it toward the boy, saying, I can't let you catch a cold for Nishimiya's sake. The boy gets annoyed and asks, What's your deal? trying to make yourself feel better by helping others. I know you bullied Nishimiya in middle school, and now you've learned sign language. You think you're a better person now. You're disgusting. Ishida replies, Yeah, I am a terrible human being and have no right to live. But I don't want to make Nishimiya cry anymore, and I won't come in between you two. The boy peeks through the umbrella and realizes Ishida is not lying. After a while, he tells Ishida, You can go back now. I can walk by myself. But before leaving, he tells Ishida something in sign language. Ishida tries to recall the meaning and gets shocked to know that the boy said he's Nishimiya's younger sister, Yuzuru. Just then, Nishimiya's mom appears, slaps Ishida, and then takes Nishimiya's sister away. As they reach home, Nishimiya hugs her sister, and they both apologize to each other. Their mom tells them to stay away from Ishida. The next day, Yuzuru comes to return the umbrella, and Nagatsuka puts his hand on her, thinking she's a boy. But when Ishida clears this doubt, he goes and stands very far away. Afterwards, Ishida comes to meet Nishimiya along with Nagatsuka and introduces him to her. Nagatsuka leaves them alone. Ishida now asks her to share numbers. Nishimiya tells him that she wants Sahara's number also, the same friend from middle school who tried to learn sign language for her. Next day in class Ishida approaches Kawai asking her if she has Sahara's number. She doesn't have her contact, but she knows which school she goes to now. He thinks of visiting her but is running low on cash. So Nagatsuka offers him some cash, saying, We are friends, just take this. Yuzuru appears with Nishimiya and tells Ishida to take her along with him. Now they both are traveling on the train to meet Sahara. Just then, he receives a message. It's from Nishimiya, thanking him for finding Sahara. She is very happy. When he glances at her, she returns his gaze, conveying contentment. After arriving, they move down the escalator to meet Sahara. But suddenly someone calls his name and they stop. A girl comes running down and says, Remember me. And Sahara. They sit in a place and start conversing in sign language. Sahara says, Sorry for leaving middle school all of a sudden. I'm glad we meet again. Ishida listens to their conversation. Suddenly, Sahara says, Your chest got bigger and they laugh. It makes Ishida blush and he walks away, saying, I need to visit the restroom. As he is crossing the road, a girl comes and gives him a ticket. He just realizes that she's now giving away tickets wearing kitty tail and ears. He then walks away from there. The next day in class, he looks at the tickets given by now for Meow Meow Club. Just then, he gets a message from Sahara enjoying karaoke with Nishimiya. He then thinks, should I keep going and have now meet Nishimiya too? But he's unsure if now will like to meet Nishimiya. The next day, Ishida visits the Meow Meow Club with Nagatsuka. A lady welcomes them in the club. Now sees Ishida and hides behind the desk. She peeks and says, crap, he really came. Now, they both are spending time with cats. Nagatsuka feels let down, expecting girls but finding only cats at the Meow Meow Club. As Ishida is here to talk with Now, he looks around, she seems to be not here. So, they decide to leave. The scene shifts to a hearing room where a doctor is testing Nishimiya. Her grandmother gets concerned because she still hasn't made any progress. Meanwhile, Ishida comes back home and sees Yuzuru, who has come to play with Maria. He gives her a cat wallet for Nishimiya. But when she goes to give it to Nishimiya, she finds her sad, lying in bed because she hasn't progressed in hearing yet. So, she silently just leaves the gift there. The next day, when Ishida is on his bicycle, now suddenly appears and sits behind him, saying, Go, go. He's amazed to see her all of a sudden. Then she spots Nishimiya at a shop and says, Still alone, I see. Poor thing. He says, Now, get off, and now realizes it's because he's there with Nishimiya. She gets off, and Ishida rides towards Nishimiya. Now runs and reaches Nishimiya before him. She tries to bully her by taking away her hearing aids. Ishida stops her and goes to give them back to Nishimiya. Now snatches them back and says, Oh, so you two are dating. Ishida says, We are just friends, and she laughs saying, Friends with the girl you bullied. That's hilarious. She gives back the aids, saying, Have fun playing friends, and walks away. 
The next morning, Nishimiya wakes up Yuzuru before leaving. Yuzuru stops her and asks, why is your hair in a ponytail today? Nishimiya makes a weird face and leaves. Later, when Ishida goes to buy bread for the fish, he spots Nishimiya with her hair in a ponytail. She stops and finds Ishida standing on the other side. They meet, and he tells, I'm going to buy bread to feed the fish. He then sits on his bicycle and moves, saying, see you soon. But she stops him and gives him a gift bag. He opens it and couldn't understand what they are but thanks her. She blushes and tries to confess to him, saying, I love you. But it sounds like I love Muo because of her undeveloped voice. He asks, are you saying love the moon? Yeah, it looks pretty today. Hearing this, Nishimiya runs away. Nishida gets a text from Nagatsuka, and then they meet. He asks him, do these looks like the moon? Nagatsuka says no they don't. Meanwhile, Nishimiya comes running home and then jumps into her bed. Yuzuru approaches her and asks, something happened. Nishimiya texts her, I told Ishida I love him. Yuzuru cries out, for real. But then, she looks into the phone again. Nishimiya texted, but it didn't get through to him. The next day in class, Ishida overhears his classmates complimenting Kawai on her new hairstyle, reminding him of Nishimiya's new hairstyle. Approaching her, he asks, why the new hairstyle? She casually responds, no special reason, just how it is for girls. He doesn't understand the real reason. She then touches his back and says, Mashiba says he'd like to be friends with you. As he turns to see him, the cross on Mashiba's face falls down. Later, they all meet at the place where they feed the fish. Nagatsuka asks, why are you here? But Sahara introduces herself, saying, nice to meet you. Ishida asks Izuru, where is Nishimiya? She replies, she went home, saying her tummy hurt. He feels low, saying, don't know why she's avoiding me. She was trying to tell me something the other day, and I couldn't get it. Yuzuru asks, what did she say? He replies, she said she loves the moon. Yuzuru tries to control her laugh and says, that would have pissed her off. But then advises him, ask her to hang out with you. If she refuses, then she doesn't want to see you. At night, Nishimiya gets the message from Ishida about going out, and Yuzuru can see her sister's excitement to go out with him. Next day, they all go to the amusement park. Kawai excitedly says, follow me, we will take that ride first. They first go to the roller coaster ride. Ishida asks Sahara, can I sit with you? She says, go ahead. While Yuzuru is with Nishimiya, as the ride starts, Sahara seems to enjoy it the most. After the ride, Nishimiya comes out with wobbly legs and Sahara goes to help her. Ishida asks in sign language, are you fine? And she smiles. Now they ride on other rides and have a lot of fun. But Ishida thinks, do I have any right to have so much fun? Afterwards, as he walks and observes everyone enjoying themselves, he smiles, thinking, this feels like a group of friends. Later, now tells Ishida, I'm hungry, let's buy something to eat. Ishida buys some takoyaki, but just then he hears the guy saying, now, you don't need to play peacemaker, as she was trying to make up between them. Ishida looks at him, it's Shimada, his childhood friend, which makes him recall all his childhood memories with him. Ishida just walks away from there, and a cross appears on their faces. Now follows Ishida. She says, I was just hoping you two could go back to being friends, to which he replies, nobody asked you. They then sit at one place, and now says, it all because of Nishimiya. If she wasn't around, things wouldn't have fallen out. Ishida says, it was not her fault. And the thing with Shimada, it's all on me. She asks, do you hate me? And he replies, probably. She stands up and runs to Nishimiya, saying, ride the Ferris wheel with me. Yuzuru gives her camera to Nishimiya. They sit inside the Ferris wheel, it starts moving, and Ishida watches them. The next day in the morning, Yuzuru comes to meet Ishida, telling I got my hands on some top secret footage. She opens it, saying it's a Ferris wheel video when I gave the camera to my sister. She then plays it. Now tells Nishimiya, back in grade school, I had no understanding of your situation, so I bullied you along with others. But all blame goes on Ishida, and he lost all his friends. If you weren't there, everything would have been fine. Nishimiya apologizes, saying I hate myself. This angers now, and she hits her, saying, just apologizing again like five years ago. Then, she leaves. Yuzuru stops the video and Ishida says, I want Nishimiya to come to love herself. During break time at school, Mashiba tells Ishida that Kawai informed him about Nishimiya being bullied in middle school due to her deafness. Ishida remains silent. Later, he confronts Kawai about telling Mashiba. But she again acts selfishly and starts humiliating him, creating drama. She cries out, Ishida was the one who bullied Nishimiya in middle school. The whole class listens to this. Ishida feels uneasy, he feels like vomiting and runs away. He rides away in his bicycle quickly. 
he stops at a place and thinks, yeah, I hate myself too. Later, he goes to their meeting spot. Nishimiya is feeding fishes, and Yuzuru waves to him. Sahara is also there. Nagatsuka appears with Kawai and Mashiba. Now is also with them. Kawai says, I called now here. She then apologizes to Ishida for earlier, saying, it was all your fault to begin with. Now says, we can't blame Ishida for everything. We also bullied Nishimiya. Kawai replies, don't lump me up with you. They both start arguing. Ishida says, enough, as he sits down. He says, it was all my fault. He says to Nao, stop thinking you can decide everything for others. He then says, Kawai you always cared about yourself. Sahara tries to talk, but he shuts her down, saying, you're just gonna run away again you coward. Nagatsuka says, I'm on your side. Ishida replies, do you even know me well? Kawai says, enough, I'm leaving, and walks away. Now everyone leaves one by one. Mashiba says, you are awful, and Ishida replies, keep your nose out of it, outsider. After everyone leaves, he asks Nishimiya, wanna go somewhere as summer breaks are starting. But she seems sad. At night, Yuzuru reads Nishimiya's middle school notebook. Her grandma warns, reading in the dark will harm your eyes. She then makes juice for them saying, I'm worried about you, you focus only on your sister and not yourself. Yuzuru points out, you skip your senior citizen meets to learn sign language for Nishimiya. Now, night falls. We see a bird lying dead on the ground. Then we see Nishimiya who's trying to say something. And in the next moment, she's lying dead. Suddenly, Yuzuru wakes up, this was a nightmare, and she hugs grandma. The next day, when Ishida goes to feed the fishes, he sees that Nishimiya isn't there. He wonders why she's not there today as he feeds the fishes. He sees Yuzuru, calls her, but notices her crying. He hides, just then Yuzuru appears there and says hi. They then start feeding the fishes. Ishida asks what happened, she says nothing. She then says, I gotta go. He says, I'll walk you. He walks with her, and when they reach, she says, you can go now. Behind her it's written it's her grandma's funeral. He says, hang in there, Yuzuru. She replies, I'm still scared. The scene shifts to grandma's funeral. She died last night while sleeping beside Yuzuru. Later, Yuzuru sees her mom who is crying all by herself, and then people come to meet them on grandma's demise. After few days Ishida texts Nishimiya, would you like to go somewhere tomorrow? Next day, we see Nishimiya sitting in the train. As station arrive, they stop, and we get to know she's here with Ishida. They both then start walking. They reach near the waterfall, it's very beautiful. They then visit a great maze. Afterwards, they start exploring other beautiful places. They discover an amazing place. Ishida says, Nishimiya, let's go check it out. But when he looks back at her, he remembers the childhood Nishimiya and tries to reach her, but he slips. Nishimiya runs to help, but he slides down a bit. Nishimiya comes closer and says sorry, if you will be with me, you'd end up unhappy. He replies, no, say let's hang out tomorrow too. As the day ends they head back to home. Next day, in the morning, Ishida is in his room. He says, I wanna see the ocean. I wanna love the people, even monsters have hearts. I don't feel like I can ever fix this. Later, he meets Nishimiya and Yuzuru. They goes to watch movie. He laughs a lot while watching the movie. Afterwards, while eating, he asks, where should we go tomorrow? Nishimiya invites him to their home, shocking Yuzuru, because their mom might not like this. The next day, Ishida is at their home, and they are going to bake a cake for their mother's birthday. Then they start working. After it's baked, they look at it, which looks great. Just then, their mom appears and asks, what is this boy doing here? And gets angry. Yuzuru handles it, putting a birthday cap and saying, it's a happy occasion, mom. They then eat the cake together. Yuzuru invites Ishida to join them for fireworks next week. Next Tuesday, they all go to watch fireworks. They put down the mat and then sit to watch the fireworks. All of their friends watch the fireworks from their place. As they watch the fireworks, Yuzuru says, Mom, let's go and bring something to eat. As they leave, Nishimiya hands a drink to Ishida and he thanks her. Then they both talk a lot. Nishimiya then gazes at the fireworks. She closes her eyes to feel the moment and Ishida is just staring at her. Afterwards, she stands up and says, I have to go and study. Ishida says I'll walk you. She responds, I'll go by myself so he says, all right, see you. Yuzuru appears and asks, where did sister go? Also, can you get my camera? So Ishida walks towards Nishimiya's house to bring the camera. The door is not locked, so he enters and calls Nishimiya. He finds the camera and as he's checking the battery, he suddenly looks outside and spots Nishimiya. She climbs on the wall. She is on the wall and is about to jump. Realizing this, Ishida runs to stop her, but stumbles and falls down. He is scared. 
he cries out, Nishimiya, and runs toward her. In the next moment, he is holding her hand, asking, why, Nishimiya, and at the same time prays to God, please give me the last ounce of strength. Just as Nishimiya also tries, but as he's trying hard to pull her, he falls down instead. It feels like he's drowning underwater, and it's so cold. A few days later, Yuzuru is in the waiting area of the hospital. When she sees Ishida's mother, she goes to ask, is Ishida fine now? She tells her, yes you can meet him now. Her mother also comes and kneels down apologizing and thanking that Ishida saved her daughter. Yuzuru also kneels down. Meanwhile, now is very much enraged at Nishimiya. She pulls her by the collar saying it's because of you that Ishida is in hospital room. She's about to hit her, but stopped by Nishimiya's mom. She slaps her but now slaps back, saying, you are her mother, right? Don't have kids if you can't take care of them. They start fighting, and Yuzuru watches this. Ishida's mom comes, and stops them asking, what's wrong with you two? She then approaches Nishimiya, who says, sorry, kneels down at her feet and cries. Later at night, we see Yuzuru taking out pictures of dead things. She says, I thought if sister will see these, she would stop thinking about dying, and starts crying. What should I do? Her mom also cries along while Nishimiya watches them silently. Next day she visit to Ishida, but now takes the flowers and closes the door on her face. Nagatsuka watches this, so he just goes and tries opening the door as now is holding it shut. They both go to some other place to talk. She tells him, I destroyed everything that Ishida built, so I want to fix everything I destroyed. They first go to meet Kawai to resolve everything. She also accepts and hugs Nishimiya. Nishimiya then goes to meet Sahara and tells I want everyone together. Sahara says I'm with you as they touch his hands. Next she goes to meet Nao, who sees her and walks away as she's still mad at her. So Nishimiya keeps coming daily. One rainy day, Nao again ignores her. Nishimiya follows and puts the umbrella on her, and finally Nao stops. In the next scene, we see some texts saying, Nishimiya, I wanted to die. It's Ishida's words who looks back. Nishimiya wakes up because this was her nightmare. She starts running out, very much scared. She then stops at their meeting place and starts crying with the thought of losing Ishida. Meanwhile, Ishida also wakes up from a bad dream and calls Nishimiya. He walks out and runs even if it's hard to run in this condition. He also reaches their meeting spot, walks forward and spots her there. She looks at him and they both wipe their tears. She touches him to check if he's real. He confirms and starts laughing. She's about to cry. He says, I'm glad you're fine. I'm also fine, so don't cry, okay? She listens to him silently. He then says, I hadn't actually apologized to you for what I did to you in the past. Nishimiya says, no no you tried making things right now, but I destroyed them. I'm sorry, and then she starts crying. He tries to comfort her. He then says, I want to apologize to others also, but I want you to help me live. He goes closer to her and holds her hand, conveying, let's be together forever. But just then, he realizes if he said something creepy and says, sorry sorry just forget it. And she laughs. And then she interlocks her fingers, promising to be together forever. Next morning, his mom takes him back home as he's discharged from the hospital. He comes out and greets Maria, who's watering flowers. She leaves everything and goes to hug him. He holds her, and they spot now, who then runs away. His mom tells him, she nursed you the entire time. He then goes to meet now, and they clear out their misunderstandings. She then says, welcome back, Ishida, and then runs away from there. The cross sign falls away. When Ishida comes back home, he sees his mom giving a haircut to Nishimiya's mom. She says sorry to Ishida. Just then, Maria's father appears and says, I'll pick up Maria from school. His mom tells him, Yuzuru is upstairs, give her jelly in the fridge. He brings jelly for her. She shows Ishida her bad marks and begs him to give her tuition. He then starts teaching her, and she says, Tomorrow is your school festival, right? Good luck. Next morning, he gets ready for school and starts practicing in front of the mirror on how to face his classmates and friends. He then sits on his bicycle and spots the gift Nishimiya gave and realizes their use and then leaves. He rides towards the school, and as he reaches, Nishimiya is already there. He then walks with her towards the school. As he heads towards class, the faces of people around him are still crossed. He sits in the corner because he still has anxiety. Nishimiya asks what happened, and he tells her, I can't able to look at people's faces, so it's much better I look down. She says, you can keep looking down, and she holds his hands and walks, and he feels awkward. They reach outside their class. As he opens the door, everyone looks at him, and crosses appear. He anxiously closes the door. He walks away, saying, my tummy hurts. Nagatsuka calls out Ishida's name, finding him hiding in the washroom. 
Ishida opens the door but avoids eye contact. So Nagatsuka cries out his name with teary eyes and says, I'm glad you're fine. He hugs him and says, I was worried about you. Ishida apologizes and thanks him for being his friend. They come out but Ishida again starts looking down as Mashiba and Kawai are also there. Mashiba tells her to hand them over. Kawai takes out something she made for Ishida. She cries, saying, I wanted to make 1,000 for you, but sorry I was able to make this much only. Ishida takes them, saying, It's amazing, thank you. Then he says sorry to both. Mashiba says, Nah, you're amazing. Now also appears saying, Are we playing friends? Kawai says, Why are you always like that? And Sahara comes to stop them. She then apologizes to Ishida, and he also says sorry to her. Now looks at Nishimiya and says, they are not talking about anything serious. She says sorry, and now says, don't apologize again, and tries to call her Baka in sign language. This amazes Nishimiya, and she helps her learn how to say Baka in sign language, and then starts laughing. Now feels good but acts cold as usual and walks away, saying, I'll get some fried chicken. Ishida then says, I'd like us to check out the festival together. He walks out with his friends, and unlike earlier, he takes away his hand from his ears and starts listening to the voices of people. All the cross marks from their faces fall. Everything seems good to him. He looks at his family, they look so happy. Then he looks at his friends enjoying, and finally, he looks at Nishimiya, who just smiles at him. Tears fall from his eyes as he's glad he's alive and everything is fine. And with this, the story ends with a powerful message of hope and redemption, showing that through seeking forgiveness and understanding, we can heal past wounds and move forward with compassion and empathy.